All right, let's talk about springs and the spring force. Now, we're going to spend a little bit of time on this because it's going to help us in the long run. And springs are quite common in mechanics, so it's worth kind of um, really understanding Hooke's Law before we get too far into mechanics. So a spring, we can all agree on what a spring is. Well, we, we get that. You know, you buy a spring, it has a certain length, and then you can stretch it or compress it. And if you do that, it's either going to pull back or push back, depending on whether you stretch or compress. And actually, the amount of force with which it pushes back is going to be proportional to the amount delta x that you compressed it or stretched it. And that's known as Hooke's Law. So I'm not going to write Hooke's Law right away. I'm going to hold off, and you're going to see why. Because First, I want to just illustrate this and wrap our heads around it. So let's assume that you buy a spring, and you take it out of the box, and it has a certain length. And we're going to call that length L0. So this is going to be 0, L0. And that's the natural length of the spring. On the right here, this is the wall, or some something you can attach the spring to anyway. And your spring looks like this. Right? I mean, good enough. That's, that's pretty much what a spring looks like, at least in physics. So this is your spring. And you can do a few things with this. You can make it longer by pulling on it, by stretching it, or you could make it shorter by compressing it. All right, so let's draw what happens when you do these things. Because I'm going to erase this, because I'm going to see what happens. First, I'm actually going to stretch it, and then I'm going to compress it. So let's say that you know you've you have your spring here, you're going to attach some block or something to it anyway, right? Something you can grab and stretch the spring with. So here's your block. Now here there's no force, right? When a spring is at its natural length, sometimes called the equilibrium length, but natural length is kind of better. It's not longer or shorter than it naturally is. It doesn't exert a force. It doesn't care to pull back or push back. You haven't done anything to it. Now, if you take the block and you pull it away, right, let's say like this, and because the spring is attached to it, you therefore stretch your spring. I'll exaggerate that by drawing it like this. Then you've stretched your spring a certain amount. You've made it longer by a certain amount. Now that's going to be delta x, right? It's the change in the length of the spring. The spring is now longer by an amount delta x, or x, it, it's equivalent. You'll find half the people use delta x, the other half use x. It doesn't matter. The point is, the spring is longer. What is it going to do? It is going to respond and is going to pull back with a force F spring, right? And the important part is that it does the opposite of what you do to it. If you stretch it, it pulls back. It tries to go back to its natural length because it liked that length. Now, this is called a restoring force, right? It tries to restore the natural length of the spring. And, well, because of that, now, if you take your block, it's not a very good block. Here we go. Take your block, you know, and you, you use it to compress the spring. You compress it like this. Now, you made it shorter, effectively. Let's say by an amount delta x in this direction. It doesn't have to be the same, but the point is some amount delta x. Now, the spring is shorter. Well, then the spring will respond. And it's going to push back with the force F spring, right? And it's, it's a restoring force. It tries to get the spring back to its natural length, because it was happy when it was that long. Now, here you have a spring that pulls back, and here it pushes back. Now, in terms of direction, it pulls back with a direction that's opposite delta x. So delta x is one way, spring force goes the other. Same is true here, delta x is to the left, spring forces to the right. So in terms of direction, it does the opposite of what you do to it. So there's that. In terms of magnitude, Hooke's law says that the spring force, I'm sorry, the spring force FSP is proportional in magnitude to delta x through a constant that we usually call k. So I'm going to write Hooke's law, and I'm going to write it the way that you find it in books. That's F spring is equal to minus k delta x. And it's going to be written as a vector. 
right? And the argument is that, well, you know, think of delta x as a vector, because really it has a magnitude and a direction. So, you know, it's a vector, technically. The minus sign throws everyone off all the time. Half, at least, of students get it wrong on the exam just because they're off by minus. Let's be clear. The minus only means that this spring force has a direction that is opposite that of delta x. So if delta x is to the right, f spring is to the left. If delta x is to the left, f spring is to the right. Okay, so that's what the minus is for. But the magnitude of the spring force is k times delta x. Now we ought to be careful. Let's just make this positive by taking magnitude, absolute value, whatever you want to call it. Right? So the point is that this is what's going to be in books because this is the right way to write things mathematically if you're doing physics. It it has magnitude and direction built into it. So this, this is a great equation for physics because they look at it like, yeah, I get it. Like vectors, opposite directions, but equal magnitude. Right? But a lot of times you get confused with the minus. So let's skip to the chase and let's agree that it is easier to write it as kx or k delta x in magnitude and then decide plus or minus based on direction because here... Your spring force is going to be negative because it goes to the left, and x is positive to the right. Well, let's assume anyway. And here be the opposite. Your spring force is going to be positive, right? But you always know. Like, there isn't a problem that you can make up where you're like, I don't know what the spring does. I'm not sure. It's like, no, no, you always know. If it's being stretched, it pulls back. If it's being compressed, it pushes back. So you're always able to get the direction from just looking at the problem and understanding what's going on. The magnitude is what you care about. So I try as much as possible to not focus on this version of Hooke's Law, which is completely valid. There's nothing wrong with it, really. I prefer to use this one, where we deal in magnitude, and the sign you figure out, right? Here, you're going to have a negative force because it's to the left. Here, it's positive because it's to the right. But in magnitude, you're going to write k delta x or kx, whichever. Okay, so this is in magnitude. Now, we should define k because it's not, not a good um, habit to introduce things and not define them. So k, like, well, k is a proportionality constant, telling you that the greater you stretch the spring, the greater the force that tries to restore the original length. Like, assuming you don't break the spring, right? Like, you've all done this, you've pulled the slinky too far, and then that's it. It's, you know, it's no longer a spring, it's a broken slinky. Like, it just doesn't go back to its original shape. So we don't deal with that in astrophysics. All the springs are ideal. We don't pull them too much. It's always the case that this force is proportional to delta x. So k is that proportionality constant. But k is actually called the stiffness of the spring often. So this is stiffness. And it's expressed in newton per meter. Right? And it's saying, well, if because it's the ratio, of course, of Fs divided by delta x. But it's saying that, look, this is Newton per meter. So if you want to stretch, or if you stretch your spring a certain amount, let's say one meter, these are how many Newtons of force you get from the spring. All right, so that's the idea of stiffness, that the greater k is, the harder it is to stretch the spring or compress it, uh, because you just require a lot of force for a given delta x, which is the amount you would stretch or compress. So... Um, I don't want to say don't overthink uh, the spring force and Hooke's Law, but let's just be practical. Think in magnitudes. I think that really helps. It's k delta x or kx is the magnitude, and then assign plus or minus based on the direction of the force. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't heard of Cogverse Academy before, we're a tutoring company that specializes in creating course companions that help you save time and improve your grades. You tell us which class you're taking, and we'll have a look at your syllabus, old exams, the style of your instructor, and put together a course companion, mapping over lecture notes, videos, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, even personalized study guides and access to a private chat for you to ask all your questions. If this sounds like something that might be helpful to you, feel free to check us out at congressacademy.com.